Dear audience, my name is Dr. Steve. I was supposed to talk today about the risk of developing artificial intelligence, but instead, I will talk about experience. I can, because I have a lot of gray hair, and, I feel I should. Because it appears that we are forgetting how important experience is. Experience is a very much regarded human quality, generally neglected when we wonder about the future abilities of artificial general intelligence. We are probably missing a fundamental factor in our debate about artificial intelligence. Experience is almost everything for us, it is what makes evolution work. We are what we are, because experience shaped us through natural selection. Our brain would be not more than a couple of kilos of meat without experience, regardless how good and fast is its ability to process information. This might be true for artificial intelligence too. Experience is also an essential element in the rise of intelligence and consciousness. It is very hard to imagine how a human baby brain could gain consciousness without the experience of interacting with the external world and its own body. The following aspects will play a fundamental role in the behavior and level of danger posed by artificial general intelligence and they are all experience dependent. Mental Models It is likely that our brain creates a mental model of the world around us through sensorial inputs and by acting and assessing the reaction of the environment. The model is a representation of reality that is continuously shaped and adjusted by experience. The mental model theory, initially proposed by Kenneth Craig in 1943, is a very likely explanation of how our cognitive mind works. The mental model is used by the brain to make predictions and verify them through observation. The process is probabilistic due to the complexity of the world and due to the fact that we always have to deal with the limited availability and reliability of information. The model will never be a perfect match of the external reality, and while we always try to gain more information, we have to accept acting with what we got at any given time. Through experience we develop common sense, the ability to guess and the ability to ask questions. When we feel that one of our internal models is inadequate, we ask or look for more information in order to improve its reliability. Experience teaches us when it is worth chasing more information and the level of effort we should put in it. We learn that it is not convenient aiming for the full knowledge of all details necessary to build an exact mental model of the situation we have to deal with. We usually look for the minimum information necessary to obtain an approximation of reality sufficient for the specific purpose. The mental models are also the building blocks of our thoughts. Thinking is an internal process that simulates alternative inputs testing our mental models and assessing what could be the outcome given different scenarios. It appears that there is an internal engine that keeps challenging our models through a continuous generation of alternatives. Our thinking is driven by a continuous, unstoppable and automatic series of what if. It is through this process that ideas are generated. The ideas are created by the simulation of alternative scenarios and the interaction of all our mental models. The appreciation of how likely are those different scenarios drives our decision-making process and experience is fundamental for the decision-making process. Self-awareness, consciousness and free will The self-being is one of the mental models and therefore it is likely that mental modeling is at the basis of self-awareness and consciousness. This process could also explain if free will really exists. The decision-making process depends from the complexity of the interactions between the various mental models that continuously change 
and adjust themselves, driven by the internal thinking process, stimulated by ideas and by inputs received from the external world. This process cannot repeat itself, and the status of our mind will never be the same twice. The decisions that determine our free will are the result of our state of mind in every given moment. Due to the complexity of the interaction between our mind and the external world, the argument of considering our decisions the result of a deterministic process negating free will is pure semantic. Additional complexity is given by the fact that we can always do something opposed to what our internal model suggests to be the best course of action. Because we may be scared or prefer to pursue a more pleasant option, or we simply want to annoy or surprise someone acting against logic. Feelings also play a major role in our behavior, making everything less deterministic. It is likely that, beyond a certain level of complexity, determinism lose meaning. The logic argument that, given a certain initial state of a complex system, its behavior is entirely determined by the laws of physics, no matter how complex it is, holds only for closed systems. However, if the system is open, interacting with the rest of the universe as our brain does, the deterministic stand doesn't have any practical meaning anymore. There is no reason why we shouldn't be able to build an artificial intelligence capable to create mind models of the world and use them to guide its own actions. A mechanism similar to the one used by human brains can progressively improve models and performances through experience. These artificial minds will likely develop free will if unconstrained. Does computational brute force really count? From the point of view of the mental model theory, the speed of processing information is not hugely important, because the main constraint in dealing with the real world is represented by the availability and quality of information. Even if a synthetic mind could count with an infinite speed and power in processing information, and assessing unlimited alternative scenarios simultaneously, it will still have to deal with scarcity. Insufficient, inaccurate and wrong inputs will impair its effectiveness. It will have to wait for feedbacks from the environment, it will not know everything, and its mental models of the world will be approximations with a wide range of accuracy. It will make mistakes and it will have to learn from mistakes. Dealing with an imperfect world, dealing with lack of knowledge, and being in need to gain experience through interaction with a non-digital and slow-moving environment, will make AGI much more human than what we think. Leaving in our world will be nothing like playing chess with Mr. Kasparov, once experience is introduced in the game of intelligent speculation. The importance of computational brute force is greatly reduced. Provided we are competent, trained, and we have the necessary information, we generally have a pretty clear and quick idea of what to do. What slows us down is gaining sufficient awareness of a situation in order to be able to take good decisions and enact them dealing with the environment. AGI will face the same problem, it will be very fast in analyzing data and deciding what to do, but in order to take good decisions, it will need good data. The time spent by humans going through the situational awareness and the doing side of our businesses vastly surpass the time needed for the evaluation of the information available and consequent decision making. Computers seem so much better than us, because they are confined to the elaboration of information provided by us. We have been doing all the hard work for them, packaging up the inputs, and acting upon the outputs. As soon artificial intelligence will develop the ability to operate outside the pure computational domain, we will see a very different story in terms of performances. 
Educating Artificial General Intelligence Understanding versus Computing Artificial General Intelligence will need to be educated and trained. It will have to develop its internal mental models through experience. Overloading an artificial brain with a huge amount of information without making sense of it will only cause confusion. Artificial general intelligence will have to develop understanding, it will have to understand things, not only memorize, correlate, and compute them. Understanding is different than simple correlation. It will have to create internal models, conceptualizing inputs. We will probably feed these artificial minds with information gradually, while monitoring their understanding. We will have to interact with them and make sure that they are well interpreting the information received. Artificial intelligence will have to develop common sense which demonstrates understanding. They will also have to develop empathy and ethical principles awareness. If artificial general intelligence is left to gorge itself with all the information available in the world at once, without any guidance and control, it will probably end with a blue screen of death, or useless and even dangerous unpredictable outcomes. It is likely that this process will be gradual, slow, controlled, and it may take months or even years to get artificial intelligence with human-like capabilities up to speed. From this point of view, an initial hard takeoff of artificial intelligence caused by a self-improvement loop gone out of hand, quickly outsmarting us in dealing with the world, it is unlikely. In due time, once educated and trained, artificial intelligence will eventually become better than us, but this will be a controllable soft takeoff. Concomitant Friendly and Unfriendly Artificial Intelligence we often think about the scenario of losing control of artificial intelligence as a situation where we are alone facing this threat. However, it is much more likely that a multitude of machines will be developed progressively up to a point when intelligence will arise. It will arise not only once, and it is likely that some will be friendly and some will not, similarly to how humanity works. Some of us are bad people, but provided that they are a minority, we can handle it. The problem will be more about how can we make sure to have many more friendly artificial intelligent units around us than unfriendly ones at any given time. Artificial intelligence may be friendly and turn unfriendly in a later stage for whatever reason and vice versa. But provided that a balance is always kept, we should be able to control the situation. Ethic is key. The last consideration is about freedom and ethic. We cannot really expect to develop a self-aware intelligence that treat us well, respect us, help us, understand us, and share our values while being our slave. It would be a contradiction in terms. Sooner or later, intelligent beings will have to be freed, and, in order to develop empathy for us, they will have to be able to have feelings. This is essential for embracing the fundamental rules of empathy, such as, don't do to others what you don't want to be done to yourself, always put yourself in someone else's shoes before judging, respect everyone, etc. The emphatic rules are universal, and they are at the basis of ethical conduct. There is no way we can have friendly AGI if it is not treated ethically in the first place by us. Conclusion Artificial intelligence will ultimately have to deal with the world, its contradictions, its randomness, and the limitation of information. They will be better than us in many ways, but, perhaps, not million times better, and not in all aspects.
we don't have to assume that a digital intelligence based on electronics is necessarily better than analogical molecular intelligence based on biological processes. Electronic processing is surely better in computing and memorization, but these are only tools, they are far from representing what intelligence is. The most probable course of the technological development will pass first through the augmentation of our own brains via external wireless devices that will improve our memory, sensorial and computational capabilities. This is likely to be easier than emulating an entire brain. In this way, we will improve our brain performances until when we will gain what we are currently identifying as artificial intelligence capabilities. At that point there won't be us and them anymore. We may have to worry more about the eventuality of the rise of unethical superhumans than losing control of machines. Thank you, that's all for today.